In this video, we'll be taking a look at the sidechain input of the compressor. The sidechain is just a fancy term that's used to describe the input that feeds our gain reduction circuit, or the part that controls the volume of our linear gain amplifier. Every compressor has a sidechain, and up until now, we've been using our input signal to feed that sidechain in order to control the gain of our audio signal. Some compressors actually have the ability of separating their sidechain from the input signal. Other compressors may have some other features inserted into the sidechain path to give the compressor extra control over the audio signal that it's compressing. To get a better idea of how this works, I've set up a track with a test tone. When we unmute the track, we can hear the test tone play. And on this track, I've also inserted a compressor. The input signal goes to the linear gain amplifier. Internally, the input signal also gets sent to the compressor's sidechain, which feeds the gain control circuit that controls the volume of the output of our linear gain amplifier. And this is the setup that we've been using all along throughout the series. Now, I've set up a secondary track here with a drum sound. We're going to use this drum sound to control the dynamics of the compressor that's on the track with the test tone. And we do that by sending its output to the sidechain's input of the compressor. With this particular plugin, I'm actually able to separate the sidechain input from the main audio signal by clicking on this button here. This makes the sidechain input available to any of the other tracks in my project. When I come down to my drum track, I can change the output to be sent to the sidechain input of the compressor. With this setup, we have our test tone playing at the input and output of the compressor, but the drum track is actually the one that's getting sent to the gain reduction circuit. So when we make adjustments to the controls on the compressor, we'll actually be adjusting them according to the drum signal's dynamics, but they will be affecting the dynamics of the test tone. Let's try it out. Okay, so although we could not hear the drum signal, we could see that it had an effect on our test tone's dynamics. The result of this effect is a technique we call keying or ducking. It's when we use one input signal to control the dynamics of another input signal. And you'll see in just a few minutes what we can do with ducking and why it's important. The main thing to understand is that we're using one audio signal to control the gain reduction circuit of a compressor with a completely different audio signal passing through it. And if you can really grasp the concept of how to set up an external sidechain with a compressor, you've conceptually mastered the idea of how the sidechain works. And from there, you can really start getting creative with how to use the sidechain for an array of different uses. And I'll actually cover some of those uses in this chapter. But there's actually so many different creative uses as to how to make advanced sidechain setups that there have been entire series and videos just dedicated to sidechaining on the Groove 3 website. So just visit www.groove3.com and in the search box above, just type in sidechain. You'll see a whole array of videos that come up that show advanced sidechaining techniques on multiple different platforms. So back to our sidechain circuit again, on many compressors like the Teletronics LA2A, the Manly Variable Mu, or our Chandler Little Devil compressor, you'll actually see a control that lets us adjust the frequency of a filter that's in place on our sidechain circuit. So it basically just lets us EQ the signal that we're sending to the sidechain. In these cases, the signal that we're sending to our sidechain is going to be the same signal that we're sending through the linear gain amplifier. The only difference is that we're applying a filter or an EQ to that signal. When we talk about audio in general, certain frequencies have more energy than others. Bass frequencies, for instance, have much more energy than treble frequencies. This is why we can feel a thump in our chest whenever we have a loud bass frequency. So sometimes when we're compressing something that is very bass heavy, the bass frequencies in that audio signal can cause the compressor's gain reduction circuit to overcompress the signal, resulting in a very squashed and non-dynamic sound. By filtering out some of the bass frequencies that are getting sent through the side chain to the gain control circuit, we can reduce the energy on the gain control circuit and have the compressor only react to the frequencies that our ears are most sensitive to, which are the middle and middle high frequencies. So let's try this out on our basic guitar track with a UAD LA2A plugin. We'll start playback. You can see that we're really squashing the signal here. 
When we decrease the emphasis knob, we actually raise the high pass filter to filter out the bass from the sidechain input. which results in a more natural sounding compression. On the other end of the spectrum, sometimes we'll just end up with a recording that has too much energy in other frequencies, like hard S's on a vocal part, or an especially sizzly cymbal sound. By accentuating certain frequencies with an EQ and sending it into the sidechain circuit, we can force the compressor to only compress when those particular frequencies exceed the level of the threshold. And this is exactly how a vocal de-esser works. Let's build a de from scratch for this vocal part. Okay, so we're just going to start by taking a quick listen to our vocal here. You couldn't stand upon your own When you left me alone Now you're sinking like a stone As you drown And we could hear right in this section that the S's were just starting to become a problem. So this is the track that we want to DS. And we're going to start by making a duplicate of this track. And for the sake of explanation, we'll go ahead and relabel this one source. And we'll relabel this one sidechain. Now on our source track that we want to DS, we're going to insert our compressor. And then you'll want to activate the external sidechain. All this does is make it available to any of the other tracks in our session. Now let's solo the sidechain track and apply some EQ to really push those S's. You couldn't stand upon your own When you left me alone Now you're sinking like a stone As you drown Okay, so you could really hear those S's coming out and almost sounding a little bit whistly in this section, right around this frequency here. What we're going to do is set the output of this track to be the input of the side chain of the compressor that's on our source track. So we'll just come up here and we'll set our output to that side chain. So now we'll actually have this EQ'd signal triggering the gain reduction of the compressor on the track that we need to be de-essed. So anytime we have a spike in our signal on that S sound, it's going to trigger the compressor. You couldn't stand upon your own When you left me alone Now you're sinking like a stone As you drown You couldn't stand upon your own When you left me alone now you're sinking like a stone as you drown. So by using that sidechain, we were really able to reduce the dynamics of just that S sound on our vocal track. Some other popular uses for sidechaining on the compressor are to build a ducking compressor for electronic or EDM music, which you can do by placing a compressor on your bass track or even your entire mix, then sending your kick to the side chain of that compressor, which will duck either the bass or your mix every time the kick hits. And this will give you that ultra big kick sound that really makes your track sound pro. One of my favorite EDM examples of side chaining a kick with your entire mix or your bass is in the Groove 3 series Top 10 EDM Don'ts by Multiplier. You'll actually find it in tutorial number three. It's a fantastic tutorial. Go to Groove3.com, make sure to check it out. You can even apply this same ducking concept in a hard rock song with dense guitars and in-your-face vocals. In this case, you'll just use the vocal track to duck the instruments that are clashing with the vocal, like the guitars for instance. So every time there's a vocal part, the guitar's volume is automatically lowered by the compressor. And whenever there's silence in the vocal, the guitar's volume is brought back up again. So let's see how this works. First, we're going to want to insert the compressor onto the track that we want to duck. In this case, it'll be our guitar group. Then we'll activate our external sidechain and set the output of our vocals to be the input of that sidechain. So whenever our vocals are occurring, the guitars will duck out of the way.
Now, the effect is a little bit heavy for this particular song, but you get the idea. If you ever do run into that situation, you'll know how to set it up. Now, if you're doing a voiceover on top of some background music, and you want the background music to come down every time the vocal is occurring, you'll set it up this exact same way. Another one of my favorite tricks is to use a ducking compressor on a vocal delay. Many times, dense reverbs and delays can muddy up an otherwise great vocal part. For this, you'll need to make sure you're using the delay or reverb as a send effect on a different track. That way, the compressor doesn't affect your original vocal signal. We only want it to affect the delay or the reverb. So we'll throw the compressor onto the track with the reverb or delay effect, and we'll send our vocal signal to the side chain of that compressor. When the vocal is present, it will duck the volume of that delay or reverb and get it out of the way so that our vocals can squeeze through. When the vocal is soft or silent, the delay and the reverb really come alive, and it can give the impression that we're using a giant reverb or delay on the vocal part, and we don't have to worry about it interfering with our vocal sound. When it comes to creative uses for the sidechain on a compressor, the creative possibilities are pretty much limitless. For more ideas, tips, tricks, and techniques, be sure to visit Groove3.com and do a search for sidechain. In the next video, we'll be discovering alternative compression types. Stay tuned, and we'll see you then.